But if America's changing, what do we have to do? If we don't engage the Latino, the African American communities, the Korean, the Chinese communities, the Indonesian communities, and other religions, religions meaningfully, where are we going to be in 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years? After all, Latinos are 52% of the population of Los Angeles. The era of the Jewish city council that we used to have, it's over. It's over. It's going to be much more a Latino city council. Asian communities represent significant populations of Los Angeles, of New York City, of Orange County, of San Francisco. And if they don't know us well, because we haven't engaged with them, how much longer are our own self-interests going to be protected? How much longer are we going to be able to count on a government that preserves the interests that are central to us and our people? I'm not going to leave you with a question unanswered, because I believe I have a partial answer with the work that we're doing at Stephen Wise Temple. And I know that the work we're doing is paralleled by many other organizations in the Jewish community, because they've asked this question of themselves, and they've come to the similar conclusion that I'm going to share with you. Because it seems that like the proverbial mother with eyes in the back of her head, we've got to be able to look in two directions. We can't lose our focus on our internal communal needs. We have to preserve ourselves because you can't be an Orla Goyim, a light to the nations, if you don't create an Am Kadosh, a holy people, by building your people and being focused on what we are and who we are and the kind of people that we are. And, not but, and we've also got to look outward and engage other religious and ethnic groups in a meaningful way. Now, many in our congregation serve on boards of organizations that reach out to other ethnic or religious groups in the city. Perhaps you're on Beit Tzedek. Beit Tzedek certainly serves a non-Jewish community. Para Los Niños, I know, is well represented by members of our congregation, serves a Latino community. Maybe you're involved with the United Way. But you see, it's a little different than what I'm describing, that kind of service. It's good. But that's Jewish organizations or secular organizations serving other communities. But that's not engagement with the communities. It's noble. It's maybe even, and I don't want you to stop doing what you're doing, but I'm just asking you to reflect on this. Maybe it's a bit patronizing on some level because we're coming in as the economically accomplished, as the socially accomplished representatives, and we're offering our assistance and service to the underprivileged. It's good. But if we just reflect on the nature of that engagement, we realize that perhaps if you're the recipient of that, you might feel just a speck, well, looked down on. Or being the one who's needy, and that's not necessarily an equal position to be in. But there's not real solid engagement of getting to know each other. So the LA Voice way, the way that we're involved in is community organizing. That calls upon us to speak to each other on equal footing, bringing the skills, the strengths we have as a community to the table to achieve actions that affect us all. And what happens then is that we in the Jewish community become invested in the changes for our city, for our community, for our nation, for our world that affect all of us, other ethnic and other religious communities as well. As well. So instead of ministering, ministering to them or serving them, what we do is we form coalitions and we have conversations and we share needs and we share wants and we share concerns, and we share ideas, and people meet each other, and they have conversations, and they're not just people serving on boards, but they're people like all of us, talking to people like all of them. And the more we speak to them about their issues and our issues, the more we'll understand their concerns, and the more they'll understand ours. Let me give you one example. We know, all of us are powerfully aware of what's going on in California right now with our budget. But for us, the crisis will be at most inconvenient. Inconvenient. State parks will be closed, certain fees will go up, the decaying infrastructure might give you a few more flat tires. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that there aren't some in our community who won't be affected more by this, because there certainly are. But the majority will experience what I've described. What about the families that depend on Medi-Cal, or state support for home health care, or nursing homes? What's going to happen to their world when the budget's cut? And how about the 225,000 kids 
who won't be able to go to summer school or, or go to neighborhood pools because they'll be closed. What's going to happen to them? What about the emergency rooms that are going to be closed where the people who have only emergency rooms to turn to when they need a doctor, what's going to happen to them? What's going to happen to the students attending a Cal State or a UC who rely on Cal grants or other scholarships to attend the colleges and can't afford the $900 tuition increase that was just put into effect? How do I know? Because I'm paying for one of those tuition increases. $900. For me, okay. For someone else, when they can barely make it, it's a whole different story. We don't know how deeply others are going to be affected by the budget cuts unless we sit down and talk to them. And it all begins in this congregation on June 17th. We spent a year building a foundation for our temple to connect with the folks who called Dolores Mission in Boyle Heights their congregation. It's another LA Voice congregation. Our leadership team here at Stephen Wise has talked to their leadership team over there. We've worked with the priests at the church. We've worked with the principal at their Catholic school. We've worked with the social workers who provide needed services to the community. We've met with the local police station and members of the community there. We've met with members of the Boyle Heights community. And we've worked for a year to gain trust, to learn about the community and its needs, and to figure out the best way for us to participate together in building a stronger city. And on June 17th, and I'm telling you this because I'm inviting you, on June 17th, we're going to host what we're calling a town hall. There we're going to secure as much congregational participation, the people of our congregation, meeting the people of that congregation. Our athletic teams from Milken Community High School are going to provide mentoring and guidance to their athletic teams. Our adults can offer Correa LA reading with the kids in the schools, business internships to kids in, in high school, parenting workshops for parents who ask for that, our therapists who speak Spanish in this community are going to offer that, counseling for promising, college counseling for promising high school kids. The W group, our young adults group, is going to work with Jewish big brothers and big sisters to develop stronger mentoring relationships with Latino kids in Boyle Heights. And the soccer team from Boyle Heights is going to come here, because we know that when it comes to Jewish kids playing soccer, Latino kids have us, uh, have us beaten. And we'll work together to uh, achieve an affordable ho housing ordinance for our city, because if it matters a little bit to us, it matters a lot to them. Because housing for them is a very difficult challenge. It's only the beginning. It's not the solution. But it's a place to start. And as you look at that television screen and you recognize the changing face of America, I'm, I'm asking, along with many others in the community, that the Jewish community responds, participates in, is a part of that. So I hope you'll not only come, but you'll be so excited about this opportunity that you'll bring your friends as well. And that we're going to continue to be what my vision of Stephen Wise is, a leader influencing the way the Jewish community responds to the changing face of this country that we love so much. Ken he writes on. So may it be. The Avot and Imahot is on page 25 in your Sidor. I invite you to rise as we recite the prayer individually, and when you're finished, you may be seated.